Welcome to another TI Inspire CX tutorial. In this session we are focusing on the relationship between the graph of a function and its derivative. We'll start by taking a look at a roller coaster ride to help understand the concept of slope, particularly that bit at the top where you can't even see the bottom. The tracks seem almost vertical. The next thing you know you're at the bottom, heading back up again. Then negative slope, bottom, positive slope. And zero slope. Now let's try a less stressful journey, a graphical one. We start off with the coaster going down, a negative gradient. It flattens out at the bottom where for an instant the slope is zero before heading back up, a positive gradient. Let's remove the roller coaster graphics and focus on the function that is currently representing our ride. The trolley is replaced with a tangent line, a line that passes through the point on the curve and shares the same gradient at that point. To help us keep track of what's going on, we can draw a sign graph, that's S-I-G-N, to highlight where our graph has a negative, zero, or positive gradient. Now it's time to draw the gradient information as a function. To avoid confusion, I'll split the screen and put the gradient information on a second graph. The gradient function provides more detail than negative zero and positive slope from our coaster ride and sign graph. It quantifies the slope, providing us with much more information about the original function. A turning point on the original function corresponds to an x-axis intercept on the derivative function. Remember, for our derivative graph, our y-axis represents the derivative. In a regular graph, the x-axis represents y equals zero, but now it represents dy dx equals zero. Our derivative function reaches a maximum somewhere between the two turning points on the original curve. This is a point of inflection, a point where the tangent passes through the curve. We have reached the steepest part of the curve between the two turning points. As we progress towards the next turning point, our gradient function returns once again to the x-axis, where dy dx is equal to zero. Proceeding past this turning point, the gradient is negative, the downhill part of our roller coaster. But we know that the roller coaster will bottom out corresponding to another gradient of zero. This of course means that our gradient function will again return to the x-axis. And between those two points, another point of inflection. <laughs> 